Welcome to I Shoot Watches. My name is Dayton, and today <clears throat> I wanted to. I ordered some things, and I, I think it's kind of fun to talk about, like when you're when you place an order for something. You never know exactly what you're going to get, and particularly this kind of thing. So, I ordered this. Uh, There's a website called um, Watches You Like in France, and it actually has quite a selection of vintage parts and stuff. Um, so I ordered this Omega Genève sample or prototype watch, and I want to talk about what exactly what the pictures are. I, I didn't correspond with the seller about it, um, and I... I had to make some assumptions from the from the pictures. So then I have the thing here now. We'll open it and see if it's the same as the assumptions I made or if it's better or if it's worse. So because this this watch has, um, it's set for 1008 and the second hand is over here. So this is a dummy watch, which probably has a non-working, it probably has no movement in it. It might have a non-working movement, but it probably has no movement. It has a dial, a date wheel, hands, um, and and then also because it's rotated in the case, the, the the dial is probably loose and probably moves around freely. But it's probably got a tool 107. I'm hoping it uses a tool 107 crystal, and it might have a, a genuine Omega crystal or not. But I'll basically see if I can open it and then um, see if my assumption is correct. I'm 99% sure there won't be any movement. But what's interesting to me about it is, um, here's a, if you zoom in on one of these, the, the picture. Um, what's interesting to me about it is it's got a, mono, it, I can't tell if the case is monocoque or not. I think it is. I'll show you the back in a minute. But it also has shrouded lugs. And it's it's kind of um gg like case in terms of the sculpting on the sides. It's also a case that I've never seen before, and I looked for it in the wild, and I couldn't find a case that looks like this. Um, this is the back of it, and what's striking about the back of it is that there's no... It could be a snapback, the, or the back could be glued on, um, because it was never made to be screwed on and off because it's a prototype. But here you can see the, um, the detail of the shrouded lug. It's kind of small in there for some reason. I'm not sure why uh, in terms of for a strap. But um, you can also see there's there may not be a stem, I mean a crown tube in it. And if there's no crown tube in it, it'll be interesting to try to um, put a crown tube in it. And um, it also looks to me like the this area where the crown fits might be not even properly finished, which would be odd. The back looks like it has some sticker residue, like it had some kind of a label on it at some point, but it's interesting that it's not, it has no markings at all. And if it's monocoque, or even if it's not monocoque, it'll be interesting to see what is written on the inside of the back of the case. Over here, it has two little marks that look like they could be um, in line with where a stem would go, or it could be a pry point for snapback, and somebody could have used a tool on it to... to remove the snapback. So I, I don't really know what to expect there, but what I'm hoping is to find some prototype type um, markings on it and that they might relate to the GG somehow, just in terms of like that period uh, of Omega. One thing I, I wanted to say that I think is really cool is that um, if, you're, if you're researching a case like that, and you you want to see if there's anything else like there like that out there you can use google images sorry if you already know this but um you just drop the image in there and then you you'll get images of things that look similar so actually i didn't see this the last time i did this but check this out this is the actual you know the image i put in there um, but this does look like that's the same watch in the wild right now. Anyway, let's look at the details here. 
So this is something that's a variation on that. Oh, this is that same variation because you can see the square, uh, the squareness of that edge right there. So what's interesting about the one I bought is it's round, and this is this is what I saw before. It seems that what they released was um, basically either this watch, which has doesn't have shrouded lugs, and it has more of a square point here. Or this kind of, and this is what also made me very interested in this. This is the almost the same thing, but it's morphed into um, a kind of early Omega integrated bracelet, again with that sharp edge. So anyway, th this is like such a interest, such a cool tool, uh, a reverse image search or whatever Google, just to um, if you're interested in something and it's, it has a form, uh, it's great for checking it out. So that's that, and we'll open that in a second. And then the other thing I ordered was, um, and that was 150 euros. Oh, so the other thing about this is what my plan is, I like that case shape. I think it's interesting if it doesn't exist in the wild at all. I think from the form of it, it is an actual Omega. Uh -oh. Hello? Hello. Mike, you just interrupted my session. So <laughs> I'm actually no no but it's fine. I should I was thinking I should turn off my phone, but I'm expecting a call from somebody else. But I want to try this. I'm just gonna put the phone there's Mike from Watch with Mike. Hello. <laughs> and, um, real quick, I, I sorry, I just wanted to dial in for a second. I think I got my uh, my Sony camera going Doing, into this yeah. time and plus with the studio mics. Okay, cool. Well let's are, are you are yeah, no, I'm literally. Yeah, I see you fine. Do, can you try to? You, you can you try to switch it, or you just do it saying the mic is working. I only have a, I only have a single source right now. Okay. Well, the other thing is, I can see your desktop, but yeah. So Mike and I are planning a collaboration where we integrate our studios in the next few days. So we'll see if that how that works out. If we're not too embarrassed the to show it. The mystery package. Oh yeah, sure. and I sent Mike a package, and he's got it there. And he still hasn't opened it. I'm, I'm happen to be doing an unboxing right now myself, which is these two. Uh, I was just explaining. I got these two things. One is an Omega prototype, and the other is a five dollar mystery watch. Three watches are not mystery. I kind of know what they are, but um, mystery about, to the audience. Mystery until about two minutes from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's talk tomorrow. We will talk tomorrow. Thank you so much for letting me uh, barge in. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Talk to you soon. We'll Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was funny. Um, the oh, so the thing is, I want even if it's, I, I'm sure it has a dummy movement, no movement inside, but it'd be interesting to open it up, see if it's made for a certain movement, try to figure that out. If it do, if it's missing, um, here's another reason why I think it doesn't have a stem tube. There's no, I don't see a tube sticking out the side of it. Um, it could be so in, incomplete that it doesn't even, you know, it can't be fitted with a stem tube for some reason. But the cool thing will be to try to turn it into a wearable watch, figure out what what the inside cut was for, what movement it was cut for, and find that movement. And I have always wanted to have an Omega Genev uh, because I live in Geneva, and Genev is Geneva. <laughs> And I want to, and I like uh, dials with um, black, the, the high contrast of a black dial. So I think it'll be cool to try to turn it into a kind of Franken watch prototype that, that works and is wearable. Okay, so then the other thing, the other thing I bought was five francs, five dollar for three watches. And these are, well, this guitar watch I'm really curious about. This is, a, I think, an LED, old LED, red LED um, watch. Uh, I'll go and I'll show you the close-ups in a minute. And then this is just a pro probably, you know, no, nothing, not interested in this quartz at all. But the guitar and the L red LED, I'll explain a little bit more why I'm interested in those. 
so Intertronic is like a brand of uh, Interdiscount in Switzerland. So it's like, it, that's not the brand of the watch. They just sell repurposed stuff. But if this is a true red LED watch from the period, it's pretty cool. And, and we know that with an acrylic lens on it, um, it can be polished off and Intertronic can be removed. So it can just be a, a vintage LED watch. And I've been interested in getting one of those for, for years now. And um, <laughs> because I remember, remember when they first came out. And they're pretty hard to get um, a, a decent one in good condition. So it'll be interesting to see if that will power up. And if it won't, then it'll be interesting to take it apart um, and just see how it worked and then throw it away. Again, these all three of these watches were five bucks all together. And then the Qatar watch is really interesting because it looks pretty, it looks a bit handmade. Like it's got the it's got the guitar plates kind of screwed on with with brass screws, and I'm sure it's a quartz movement. But my idea there is to try to put a different movement in it, and um, it's just so unusual, uh, and and because it might almost be handmade, I I was just really curious. I can't see the brand can't make out this it probably says quartz there i i'm sure it's not going to have any value in itself but the but what an odd construction and the band is just very odd and um i've been looking for something to put the patek philippe movement that i have in it this is a patek philippe 16250 and um I think it'd be kind of hilarious <laughs> to put a Patek Philippe movement in the guitar case, but the case has to be, it has to be kind of on its own interesting enough to justify it, which is going to be hard to do. Okay, but let's, um, let's look at these, these uh, three watches first. Get that out of the way. Calm down. Came with an invoice and an advertisement for Swiss rum. That's good. So this one I'm not really interested in, but I'll take a look at that in a minute. And I might as well get it out here. This is a Reader's Digest watch, which is interesting. It'll, it'll be fun to take it apart. And you know what's interesting, actually, also, it has a pretty nice leather faux alligator uh, strap that's probably 18, 14, 18 millimeter, 14 millimeter. Anyway, that's something to look at later. This is really cool. Swiss case. Base metal bezel, stainless steel back. It's fairly, it's fairly like new. Um, but I'm going to save this for later as well, because I'm going to have to figure out how to get the back off care carefully with my case opener tool and then see if a battery makes this come back to life or not. Okay, now this jewel.
z z y z x look at that two thousand and one design Japanese movement z z x And then how does this work? It's got a hook here and it hooks into these. Works like that. And since it's quartz, we know that the battery is no, nope, working on that. That is funny. Actually, I gotta try this. Seems like a very precarious way to connect a strap, but it works. That's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's probably the tackiest thing I've ever seen, but I like the, um, ooh, it's also shedding PCB free. That's good. It's basically unworn. It still has the sticker on the back. And if you compare the movement size with the Patek, that's uh, pretty close. And I was thinking like the Patek dial would almost, even though it's kind of um, ellipse shaped, it almost would work with the guitar because it's um, the fretboard or whatever kind of, kind of makes sense. How, it would need a little circular frame around it. That is funny. I don't think I'll do that with the Patek Philippe, but. So I think that the, the PCB free aspect of this strap is maybe causing it to shed a bit. Zizix. Um, okay, so remains to be seen how much of a treasure those are if they if the LED watch works at least. Finally, so this guy, Omega Prototype, I'm super curious about this. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So the first thing is it actually is it doesn't have a crown tube for whatever reason, a stem tube, but it, it certainly has the, oh yeah, it is a little bit off there. That's what I thought I saw in the picture. It's a little bit prototypey at an angle there. Um, the case back does come off. You can see it's partly pried here. So it's, it's some kind of a snapback. 
it has a divot here to actually get a, a, a case back tool remover under it. So we'll be in there in a moment. I just wanted to inspect. It's unusual. And this imperfection around this is unusual too. I think I'm right about the sticker residue. So the other thing I could do, crystal, let's see what's marked inside and let's get the dummy thing going. Um, meaning get the presumed dummy movement out of there. I really want to start being careful about accidentally marking things. So I'm going to just use that plastic. There's the dummy movement. Nothing on the back. And that means nothing. That means there's no information. There's a dummy plastic movement here. So that that's a when you see a clock, a, a watch that is prototype, or even mystery watch. Anytime it's set for that time, the the photograph time. 1008 or there's a pretty good chance you're going to get something without a movement. The dial looks kind of nice though. Hands look kind of nice. So let's see if we can remove that. I'm right about the, these scratches also. I'm not sure what those marks are. And it'll be interesting to try to figure out if this is cast back of this. So I don't think it's going to come out. I think it, it's, it's a prototype for a monocoque. And the dial is just not going to come out the back. And I think all of this was cast. Stainless steel cast. I also think it may not even be made for a movement. Although that's, that could be a movement dummy. Let's see if we can figure that out. I need to learn all those things about line 11 and a half, like what that means in terms of millimeters. This is 28, 8, is that right? Um, it's probably, it probably could have a movement put in there. It just doesn't feel like it has any of the normal movement ring stuff. Okay, the other thing is to see if the uh, tool 107, that's 32.95, the tool 107 I have. This is only 31.4, so it's not a tool 107. And the other thing we can look at finally is if that is an Omega crystal. I don't 
think it is. Oh, so these are these hands have a loom reservoir right here, and this white inset for contrast. And then you could loom the tips of the um, indices, I suppose. Seems like a nice dial. The next problem, though, is going to be without the. I, I need the equivalent of a tool 107 for this smaller crystal. Could make a nice watch if a movement if I can get a movement in there and working. Oh wait, that's upside down. Yeah. But I have a feeling that this watch would have been basically a, a dummy incomplete. For an unrealized model, perhaps similar to the GG, although the, the GG case is more complete um, because it's 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 created for a specific movement. And the problem with this is that the big disappointment I would say is that there's absolutely no indication of what this is, who made it. I was hoping there'd be some markings in there and there's no place left for markings like I think I have to remove the dial out the front but I'm not going to find any anything inside there that date wheel maybe that date wheel belongs to a specific movement it does say Omega Omega Swiss. And this there's a sticker that says 58214 on the back of the dial. And 1010. 1010 is probably the date wheel part number, but now in terms of removing the movement. I don't really want to use the Bergeon crystal lift on this crystal because I'd like to keep the crystal in perfect condition. That's also tricky. There's something else I want to look at under the microscope, which is this weird angle on the stem hole, whatever you call it.
Oh, that 1010 is in the plastic. Omega is in the plastic. Swiss is in the plastic. So there's nothing actually written on the date wheel. There's just glue on it. And I've seen these before. There's also like a fake hand pin there that allows you to connect those hands to something. I hope the hands are real. They look a little bit plasticky, but I think they're real. Surely they're real. The other problem is there's no the bevel on the oh wait that is interesting it looks like the the crystal is not properly fitted either see how it's got this edge here I don't know if, if you can see that. And that crystal should push out. Because otherwise there's nothing to grab. There we go. Okay. What I meant by nothing to grab is that crystal did not have um Seems like it's in beautiful condition. The crystal is, uh, it doesn't have any place to compress it. It's, it's pure uh, pyramid shape above the case. Now, look a little bit more at the detail of this. I guess this thing is made out of brass and then I don't understand why that why that has a a brass look to it it doesn't look like brass it look it, it could have been nickel plated after after it was formed But then why would it not, why, why would they machine it again and expose that brass? If anybody has any theory about that, let me know. I'll, I'll figure all this out eventually. 
I remember I bought one watch and I thought it was made out of gold and then nickel plated because the gold was easier to work with. But that's I don't think that's the situation here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is brass just because it was easier to work with. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching.